Welcome back, everyone, to the next installment of Dreadout Keepers of the Dark. We've taken care of doors 101 through 108. This guy... You know, he doesn't say anything new, but the important thing is this door's been unlocked for a while, but now that I've beaten all of the keepers, maybe it's time we took a look? Game over! I win! Okay, not gonna lie, I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting to walk into the door and have it slam shut behind me. Or, you know, the room could vomit at me. That's good, too. Oh, wonderful. Well, Another go away. I never said I was ready to face him. Well, I guess that's the implication. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Sure you can. Who the hell are you? Oh, God. Whoa, that's how that's gonna be? Alright. Come on. Hey, come on, come on! Didn't help. Here's a tricky one. What is Doom level? All these skull. Oh. Miss Siska, because that'd be quite the reveal. Behind me? 
Maybe. Oh, there you are. Cohen Summer Lady? Where are we going? What the hell is this? This is... Wow. I don't know what I expected, I'll be honest. But it wasn't this. You certainly gained weight, my dear. Is this new territory? I don't remember these. This is this vine ceiling. Where is this going? Oh god, where am I? Now what is your problem, lady? Chill out. Ow. I guess I kinda had that coming. Out. I'll do this all damn day, lady. Ugh. No! Don't you realize what you've done? No, I don't. I really don't. Can I just not walk there? Okay. Let's... Yeah. Serpent Mistress. Stories have been circulating widely about the existence of a powerful demon who regularly changes shape between a beautiful woman and a scaly lizard-like creature. Well, that mystery's solved, but, uh... Oh! Yeah, okay, but what? Am I on the other side of the door? You are ready. Now go. What? Prove that you are indeed worth the promise you made to us. Huh. Uh, yeah, okay. I'll just, uh... Oh. Oh. Okay. You don't look so good. Can I do that with anybody? Like, am I allowed to take pictures of any of the ghosts here? No? Okay.
Oh man. Oh, the guy in the mirror with Miss Siska? Yup. And now it's me? Am I the lizard woman now? I think we're the new chosen one. Oof. <laughs> That's pretty out there. I can kind of get behind that. And in this case, it really is like Demon Souls in that the, the ending wasn't really like over the top but that was never really supposed to be it was the the journey so you know what i can honestly get behind this i really can that was pretty rad i wonder if there's anything uh after the credits Okay. And when you're done, it just puts you right back here. I wonder if this means anything. It's still not finished yet. I don't know. I wonder if anything happens, uh... You know, the door's shut. Does that mean anything? Why are you still here? Someone will be out of a job. There's like nothing to do. Cinder laggy, cinder laggy. I'm kind of accustomed by your presence. Being alone for eternity isn't such a bad idea. Huh. I don't know. Maybe there's something up with that mirror. Uh, before I go into the mirror, I do want to pick up one thing. I had totally forgotten about actually looking at the Seeing Blind entry in Ghostpedia, so let's take care of that right now. Poor guy. When this ghost was alive, he was a decorated police officer in Germany. No case was ever going to be closed in his book. I, th mm, I, th I think I know what that means, but normally closing a case is when you solve it, right? I think, I guess they mean closing a case as in you know, dropping it, like unsolved cases. His last mission, however, proved to be the toughest case to crack. He was tasked with apprehending a serial killer who always collects his victims' eyes after murdering them, a mission that led him to follow the trail to several countries. He even left his own wife and children in his hometown to chase his obsession, to apprehend this now famous killer. After three years of searching, he finally caught up with the psychopath in Indonesia. Unfortunately, the killer got to him first. He was captured and tortured for days. He forced the detective to eat all the eyes he collected over the years. Finally, he was burned to death. I don't know, man. If the serial killer is neurotic enough to keep the victim's eyes, would he really lose the collection by feeding them to a victim, even if that is creepy? Local police officers found the body the next day. His mouth and stomach was stuffed with eyeballs. His own eyes were ripped out of their sockets, indicating that he was forced to eat them as well. Before the police can complete the autopsy, the body disappeared mysteriously. Some say he still wanders around trying to find his suspect. He is tied to the souls of the victims, which was now inside his body. All of them would scream loudly every time he opens his mouth to ask for help. He himself cannot utter any word. The eyeballs filling his mouth blocks any coherent utterances. This is kind of as creepy and sadistic as the Beast story, although I do kind of like that they give an explanation for why there's an eye in his mouth, and also why there are many eyes in his level that indicate where items are. 
that's rather creative, but man, this poor guy, it's a good thing we put him down. Anyway, without further ado, let's see what we can do about finding that last charm needle. Well, I went looking for that last charm needle and I seem to have found it in Area 107 with the blind detective ghost. That means I have all 14 charm needles. Let's see if this makes any kind of difference, huh? The charm needles apparently make it easier to fight that charm needle ghost. The more you have, the more damage you do, but I was looking for them for the purpose of completion. Can I use that last mirror now, maybe? Of course the mirror's behind me, but let's just see if this guy has anything to say. Just nothing new. Can I use the mirror? I beat the game. We have the sound. Oh my god. Am I out? Oh, we got like radical credits? That's cool. Also, now I get to see all the cool stuff we did. That's freaking sweet, so we got like the real credits. I can totally get behind this. We got the Heavy Metal Ghost, we got Dreadout Act 1 action here, 2. We got the Lady in Red. This is super cool! Again, the choppiness is from my computer, but... Like, like not the game, but... This this is way over the top compared to the uh, the other credits I got. That's freaking cool. So now I get to see all that rad stuff we did with like sweet psychedelicish credits. Like not psychedelic, but kind of like what is this? Like 70s movie? Like grindhouse credits? I don't even know. We're going through all the voices of the characters now. Like even from Act One and Two. It's freaking sweet. Sasuk lady. This is hell yeah. Well, that's cool, now we got the real ending. I can get behind this. It was worth it getting that last charm needle. Alright. Boom, there you go. So we beat Dread Out, Keepers of the Dark, um, for real. This game was freaking amazing. Well, we've done it. We have beaten Dread Out, Keepers of the Dark. This was a lot of fun. I don't know how much it really tied into the story. There is kind of what Linda may have to do as this entity she became at the end of Act 2, but for the purpose of the DLC, I'm really not sure how much it matters, especially because the Ghostpedia has not been updated regarding the creatures that you've caught in the first two acts of the game. This was kind of a showcase of a bunch of new ghosts with a couple old ones thrown in so as to keep the levels populated with something or other, should you have cleared the levels beforehand. This is a, a very interesting kind of game. It clearly pays tribute to Demon Souls and Dark Souls and games of that sort, but even the ghosts are very, I guess I could say, uniquely designed. I saw some questions in the comments area regarding um, especially the nine-tailed fox asking, whoa, wait a minute, uh, I don't remember that being part of Indonesian lore, is it? Um, I have not looked this up myself, but I think it might not be? Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but the reason I bring this up is that this Dreadout game was a crowdfunded game on Indiegogo, and one of the perks that were, um, that was claimed by eight people was make up your own ghost in the game and give it a backstory. So it all kind of came to a head in Keepers of the Dark. This was kind of the, uh, I guess the Indiegogo backer DLC, sort of. So that's why you had a bunch of ghosts which looked and acted completely different from anything else you've ever seen in the game, especially Acts 1 and Act 2, and, uh, or Act 1 and Act 2. And their backstories were also very wildly different in terms of type and uh, tone. So that would explain that. I'm sure that the nine-tailed fox was a 
Indiegogo backer ghost. And the reason I say I'm sure instead of it definitely was, was that there were eight rooms, rooms 101 through 108, but there tended to be two things to take out in each room. If I had to guess, I would say that the ghosts that you beat and it says spirit banished would count as um, the kind that were um, crowdfunded, I suppose, but I don't have a guarantee on that. Still, that explains why, again, you see very radically different stories and even types of fights, so it made for a cool, eclectic, I guess, arrangement of new enemies and effectively new gameplay. It was really interesting to see. I also very much enjoyed that while there were new levels, they also reused old ones and brought them back in different ways. I think my favorite version of this would be uh, the school from Act 1, because it still very much was just about the entire map from Act 1, except Mannequin City, man. That was out of control. That was probably the scariest part of the entire DLC, just for the level. And the funny thing was, it was one of the least threatening. Mannequins are just creepy even though there were only two enemies in the entire place, and they were both the boss. That was an amusing little, uh... I don't know if it was necessarily supposed to be a trick played on the player, but whatever the case, well done. There was also the nerd ghost, but really the only threats were the mannequin woman, I suppose. And even then, if she runs at you when you break the mannequin she's in, I never actually did touch the moving mannequins. I don't know how much they would hurt, if at all. And then, of course, the, uh, the needle lady. Ooh boy, that the Charm Needles, she had a creepy face, man, and crazy telekinetic powers. But overall, this whole game, it came with a really great show-stopping boss fight in Room 101 with the, the, the Medusa, you know, head-type ghost with the faces of her victims in her hair. That was fantastic, and just it just set a stage for a great campaign. This wasn't a linear story like Acts 1 and 2 were, and there wasn't really much of a plot to go with. There was something there, but again, it felt very Demon Souls or Dark Souls in that you go through the story and you get to the end and you do see an ending, but really it was more the journey than the destination. And especially if you played the Souls games before, it's come to a point where that's become, I guess, established knowledge. Um, that's just how it is, especially for Demon Souls and Dark Souls 1. I haven't seen how Dark Souls 2 and Bloodborne... Well, I've, I've seen an ending for Dark Souls 2, and I've seen the endings for Bloodborne, and again, they exist, but it's really more the journey than the destination. You know, cool ending, I guess, but how about those 60 hours you just played? And Dread Out was no different. Um, you play the game for a while, and you get an ending, and okay, cool, and they met, now maybe you can go back and look for achievements or something. So I would say this was one of the more fun campaigns to play. It's kind of a toss-up for me, which I like more, Act 2 or Keepers of the Dark. And it was just really cool to see all these ideas come together. And as I indicated at the beginning of the Let's Play, I think that this is it for Dreadout, at least for Linda's story. So it's pretty cool to see everything that was contributed to come to fruition and make this awesome Fatal Frame and, surprisingly, Demon Souls tribute. This was a blast to play. I really enjoyed playing this, and I hope that you enjoyed watching as much as I enjoyed playing it. Thank you all so much for watching me go through this story, and of course special thanks go to title card artists. So, for the Keepers of the Dark title cards in order of submission and therefore order of appearance, thank you to DJ Gamer, Dracologist, Sean Paul, and Tom A. And again, thank you all so much for watching. This has been a really good time. Until next time, everyone.